In this video, we'll solve a root finding problem using the bisection method. We have some water flowing through a trapezoidal channel at a flow rate of q meters cubed per second. The geometry of the channel is governed by the critical depth y, which must satisfy this equation. Finding the critical depth is important because it allows hydraulics engineers to understand how much energy the water carries. If I told you to solve this equation for y, you'd probably give up immediately. I know I would. Therefore, we need to employ a root finding method to numerically find the value of y since it's incredibly difficult or impossible to find analytically. Part b of the problem wants us to apply the bisection method until the percent relative error falls under some threshold. Doing many iterations of the bisection method by hand with this particular equation sounds rough, so let's use one of the bisection method functions I wrote in a previous video. The problem calls for the percent relative error, so we should use the bisection underscore xtall function. You can find a link to this function in the video description. Before we do anything, we need to graph the function so we can pick our initial guesses. Here we are in MATLAB. I'm going to declare a few variables of interest. I made an anonymous function f representing the function we want to find the root of. Just from looking at f, I have no clue what to pick for my xl and xu, so I just guessed xl equals 0 and xu equals 5. This takes some experimentation. If you zoom in on the plot, you can see that these are actually valid initial guesses, but we can do much better. This is more appropriate. We can clearly see that the root occurs around y equals 1.5 meters. With this in mind, we can use the bisection method function I wrote to obtain a more precise answer. I set ES equals 1 and max it equals 15 because that's what's specified in the problem statement. Once again, we're using the xtall version of the bisection function because this version uses the percent relative error as its error metric. Make sure the function is in your working directory before you run the code. We can see that the function returned y equals 1.5078, which agrees with the plot. The percent relative error is 0.5%, which is under the threshold we specified, and it converged in 8 iterations. Now that we know how to use the function, let's perform a parameter study to see how the critical depth changes if we change the flow rate. Q will vary from 20 meters cubed per second, which is its current value, to 40 meters cubed per second in increments of 2.5 meters cubed per second. Let's define some parameters and then set up a for loop to call the bisection underscore xtall function for each value of Q. The qvec variable holds the various q values, and the yvec variable will be used to store the corresponding y values. Now let's write the for loop.
I redefine the f variable to be an anonymous function of two variables, q and y, because I want to indicate that q is no longer a static parameter. The fplot statement plots a new anonymous function, which is a function of just y, but calls the redefined f function with the current value of the qvec vector. Then I pass that same anonymous function into the bisection underscore xtal function. It just so happens that the same xl and xu we used in the previous part works for the entirety of this part, but that isn't always the case. I know this because I messed with the upper and lower guesses a lot before recording this video. I actually did a lot of experimentation. I made plenty of errors when trying to find a suitable xl and xu and had to really zoom in on some sections of the plot. Even seemingly simple stuff like choosing the upper and lower guesses can sometimes be a pain. If we open the plot, we can see that y and q vary somewhat linearly. It would be interesting to curve fit this data and understand the relationship between these two variables more in depth. Our data aligns with the second figure we generated. When q equals 20 meters cubed per second, the root was around 1.5 meters. If you look at the equation, q squared is essentially a scale factor, so as q increases, the function values become more exaggerated. This means that the root corresponding to one q value will be found to the right of the root corresponding to a lesser q value. That trend is reflected in figure 3, which shows a proportional relationship between q and y. Even if we can't explicitly deduce some mathematical relationship between variables, we can form our own makeshift understanding through things like root finding and parameter studies. See you next time.